Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna show you my official compost tea recipe that like 80% of you have been asking about the last few weeks. But first, be sure to show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also, check out our sponsors, Robert Bergman's ILGM, Mars Hydro, and CMO for all your cannabis needs. And as a lot of you guys already know, we're having a 10K seed giveaway on April 1st, three winners, $170 ILGM voucher for each winner and a four-way Skype video call with me. And all you gotta do to enter is become a VIP patron in our Patreon community. And when you join, you get early access, you become eligible for our giveaways in the future, you'll get a daily dose of our daily tips. So if you wanna enter the giveaway, follow us on Patreon. A link will be in the annotation above and in the description below. So you guys have been seeing how crazy our Skittles been booming and you wanna get in on what we've been using for the compost tea. So Let's get right into it. Of course, you're gonna need your five gallon bucket and an air pump. And the air pump that I'm using is the Unic Life UL40 air pump. It's pretty good, does the job, and really not that expensive. Maybe $30 at your local hydroponic shop. And you know, there's always Amazon to buy like literally anything, right? If you notice, I'm oxygenating the water. It's gonna help aerate the soil and maintain an aerobic environment. After the root rot issue that we had, I started oxygenating the water and our Skittles started really perking back up again. So I mean, try it out. I mean, if you're using tap water, you got to dechlor for 24 hours anyway. Might as well just get the air pump going too. So we waited 24 hours and it's now time to add all the ingredients we need for this compost tea. The first thing you're always going to want to do is add the organic blackstrap molasses and two to four tablespoons should be good. I'm kind of eyeballing it on this one, but we should be good. You want to mix that in a little bit. And what I'm using is Plantation's Unsulfured Molasses. It's a pretty good brand. I've been using it since like 2020, but grandma's is also another good one that I recommend. If you guys have other brands, throw it in the comment section below. You know, I just wanna name the brands that I've been using that's been working out for me. Next, we're gonna be putting everything in this cheesecloth bag that we have, and it's not necessary, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a lot cleaner this way, trust me. I learned this the hard way. Before, I didn't use the cheesecloth bag, and I dumped all the extra stuff, and my bathtub just looked like a bear took a massive steamy dump all over it. I mean, it was really terrible, so save yourself some headaches. Get some cheesecloth bags. I mean, they're like $5 for like 10 bags. Why not, right? The first thing we're adding is one to two cups of Wiggly Worms Earthworm Castings. I'm low balling it because it's always to give a little bit less than a little bit too much. Now the worm castings contain minerals such as concentrated nitrates, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus. They're gonna help you get a bigger yield, protect your soil and plants from diseases, and help your soil retain moisture. Next, we're gonna add two tablespoons of alfalfa meal, and this is one ingredient I don't really hear too much about, but it's beneficial because it works with the microorganisms in the soil to rapidly break it down, release nutrients, and makes an excellent compost accelerator. So this is definitely something you want to have in your compost tea arsenal. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of kelp meal. Kelp meal is pretty much dried up seaweed and has over 70 different trace minerals, helps promote overall plant health, and is known to fight pests and diseases. And I've been using kelp meal since the longest time. I used to go with botanic hair seaweed extract, but I kind of switched it up to down earth's kelp meal. Next is the ultimate piece de resistance, the meat and potatoes, the bread and butter, the flower builder, seabird guano, and this stuff looks like a pile of dried up bird dung, but this stuff is the bomb. Super high in phosphorus, great for flowering, and a must have in your compost tea. You want to add one tablespoon of Roots Organic Seabird Guano, that's just the brand that we're going with. When this drop, you just hear a clunk, but I mean, it's really good stuff. The NPK is 0, 12, 0, no surprise there, but that's pretty much everything we put in our compost tea. Now we just gotta wait about a day and a half. I like to brew between 24 to 36 hours, give or take. This is more of a preference kind of thing. Some people like to brew for 24 hours. Then again, there's some people that brew for 48 hours. Now we're gonna come back and see how our compost tea looks after about 30 to 36 hours. But let's talk about the compost tea first. When you get the air pump working, it's actually considered to be aerated compost tea and you're thinking, well, I mean, what's the difference, right? compost tea is compost tea, right? Well, yeah, but the fact that you're oxygenating your compost tea means that you're gonna maintain an aerobic environment for your plants, which is what you want. I mean, without that air pump, you know, it's, 
kind of useless, you know what I'm saying? The theory is that the microbes use up the oxygen quickly, then aerating the compost tea will produce large amounts of good organisms faster and prevent the bad organisms. What you don't want is an anaerobic environment. That's where you're gonna have a whole host of problems, and that usually happens when the microbes do use up the oxygen too quickly. This is the reason why we have to use the air pump. So let's check back in about 30 hours and see what our compost tea is looking like. All right, so we waited for about a day and a half, give or take, and we got the compost tea bubbling pretty good. And this is exactly what you wanna see. You want a lot of bubbling, lots of oxygen. This is all good stuff, so remember guys, two to four tablespoons of organic blackstrap molasses, one to two cups of worm castings, two tablespoons of alfalfa meal, two tablespoons of kelp meal, and one tablespoon of seabird guano. And I mean, that's pretty much it. So before I close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen for being a member and supporter of our Patreon. I really appreciate all the help, guys. So I'm gonna close out today's video, and be sure to show some love and support by dropping a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys on Friday. And as always, stay safe, peace.